Hi everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. I had a question and that was, how do hormones get transported throughout the body? And also, is every transporter different? Because they're watching my videos on the metabolism of estrogen, DIM, testosterone lowering, what is sex hormone binding globulin? Because they see that. And hormones are basically transported throughout the body on a bus. Thank you for watching. All right, everybody, this is Dr. Juwan. Thank you for watching. If you haven't done so already, three things. Hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment. I always read my comments, and it gives me ideas on what videos to do. So I'm answering an email, and the question was, how are all hormones the same? What's the deal between a lipid-soluble and a water-soluble? And what's the deal with the sex-binding globulin hormone that you talked about in the metabolism of estrogen, DIM, how to raise free testosterone. Okay, let's start on this side. Hormones are made in the endocrine system. We have different systems. We have the muscular system. We have the nervous system. We have the what's called the endocrine system, and that produces hormones. Thyroid hormones, sex hormones, insulin, cortisol, and all, all that. So the endocrine system, it makes the hormones. Then it travels throughout the bloodstream to get to the target tissue. Is it your thyroid? Is it your pancreas? Is it this? Is it that? Now what happens, it binds with a specific receptor, a protein receptor on the cell, okay, on the surface of the cell, much like a pen cap. This is a black pen cap. It, it attaches onto, so if this is a, a, a special carrier protein, here's the receptor. The pen cap says, okay, black on black. Okay, this is what it is. So it would not, the reason why, so it won't dock on the blue one, it's bigger. You can't, even if you tried. So there are specific protein receptors. Now the blood, it travels throughout the bloodstream. So the blood consists of cells and plasma and the blood plasma consists of 92% water because everything travels throughout the bloodstream. Now here's the clincher, because I know this is what you're wondering about. The hormones, there's two types. You have hydrophilic, they love water, and then you have the ones hydrophobic, which don't like water. So basically you're looking at oil and water. And what is blood plasma? 92% water. So you have the water soluble, so they have no problems traveling throughout the bloodstream. Why? Because they love the water. They're water soluble hormones. And these are your peptide hormones, amino acid derivatives, insulin, growth factor, prolactin. These are all water soluble hormones, so they have no trouble circling throughout the blood the bloodstream, which is 92% water, to enter the target tissue, the cell. Now here's a clincher. The hydrophobic ones, they do not like water. They're lipid soluble. They're fat. It's oil. They have a, so they have a problem traveling in the bloodstream. Why remember, blood is water, 92% water. So what they have, so these ones are your steroid hormones, the androgens the estrogens, testosterones, progesterones, okay, and the DHTs, and the thyroid hormones. This is why when you look at my previous videos, a lot of times, or you're paying attention to blood work, a lot of times estrogen and thyroid hormones, testosterone and thyroid hormones, testosterone and estrogens, this is where the sex binding globulin hormone or the thyroid binding globulin hormone plays a big part. Why? Because these individual hormones do not like water. So they use it as a transporter. They need it. So they have to uh, travel on a specific carrier protein. I call it the bus. They have to travel throughout the bloodstream. Why? Because they don't like water. They're lipid soluble and the carrier protein is the bus. So they attach a protein transporter and they detach. They get out of the bus before before passing into the cell to hit the receptor, their specific receptor. It sounds simple, doesn't it? I know. So this is where the liver comes in, the liver dynamic organ. Okay, the liver, they make the transport proteins. They make the bus. They make the bus that these things uh, get carried on. And there's two in particular. So when you look at a blood work, you have your albumin and your globulin. Those are the main transporters. Yes, the globulins, they're also a big part of your immune system. But I just want to talk about a carrier protein because the globulins do play a big part. The albumin and the globulin, they're, they're water-soluble. 
So what they do, they bind. They bind to the lipid soluble, which allows them to be transported, transport protein throughout the bloodstream. So it allows the hormones to be carried throughout the blood to its target cell, the albumin and globulin. Sex binding globulin hormone. Thyroid binding globulin hormone. So what happens is that there's two tricky words. So when it's transported on the bus, it's bound. If it's not being transported on the bus, now you're talking about like the water soluble vitamins, those are unbound, otherwise known as free. So when you're looking at blood labs and you see free thyroid, free uh, estrogens, free testosterones, free um, insulin, this is the stuff that's free. So only the free ones could actually get off the bus, okay, and leave the capillary to enter the cell. Thing is, there's a, there's a percentage called the free fraction. The free fraction, that is what's being read as the percentage of the hormone that is active, that's biologically active. So when you see like thyroid hormone, okay, T4, free T4, T3, free T3, okay, testosterone, free testosterone. So the one that's bound can't leave the bloodstream to enter the cell. So you could have a lot of hormones being produced, but really the number that you're looking at is the free because that's the one that's actually biologically active. So like an example like of the blood system, okay, this is my little makeshift, you know, diagram of the blood capillary. I'm not the greatest artist in the world. So you have these hormones that are circling throughout the bloodstream. So you have this water soluble hormone, which is free, and it could easily leave the bloodstream to enter the target cell and do its thing on the receptor. You have the bound, Okay, this is the bus. So the bus carries the hormone to the target cell to be released. Okay, so then here, so it lets off this hormone that is lipid soluble and it's free to enter the cell. But it can only be done through the transport system. Okay, so on my next video, I'm gonna attach a link here. So when we're talking about sex binding globulin hormone, especially when it comes to like the thyroid or I'm doing more on, on hormones, the testosterone, the estrogens, this is a big factor. The question is if you have this sex binding globulin hormone that's too high, that's bound. Okay, so I hope this helps. I know it's kind of tricky. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching. Be good.